You're listening to I Love It When, and I'm your host, Mo. I'm a speaker, coach, and connector. You're in the right place if you're looking for some inspiration and you're ready to truly embrace who you are. My intention with this podcast is to help you see that you are so much more powerful than you realize. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of I Love It When. I'm your host, Mo. I'm going to adjust my mic there a little bit. And I'm coming to you straight from my workout. <laughs> I didn't even feel like I wanted to spend the time getting ready, like actually putting on makeup or anything. I just wanted to get right to it because today I'm doing another solo episode and there were a number of things on my mind about what I should talk about. And so here's what I landed on. I decided I want to start off by pulling a couple of cards for, for you guys what some people would call my collective. So whoever's listening to this podcast, I pulled some cards for you. And then I want to talk a little bit about the reflection process and how we reflect in our lives before moving forward. And then a coaching client that I work with this last week asked me a question that I thought, oh, wow, this could be a whole podcast episode. And that was, how do you know you're on the right path? And so I want to talk a bit about that and about staying in the flow and then I want to end the episode today with a meditation. And so once the meditation comes, if you want to participate, just please make sure that you're not driving or that you have some space and some time uh, because you'll want to close your eyes and kind of settle into that space. So just to prepare you for that. So the cards that I pulled, I used this deck, which I've used before called the Energy Oracle deck. It's one of my new favorites. I love it because I love the descriptions on the cards and the topics that it brings up and the images on the cards as well. So the three cards that came out were number 45, a man holding a heart. Number 29, the world. And number 21, strategy. So I'm going to read you the descriptions on these cards first, and then we'll talk a little bit about what they might mean for you. So number 45, a man holding a heart, a male dealing with family, love, or emotions. This tender man sits with flowers all around, holding a heart in his hand. For a man, this signals a greater clarity around emotions and their purpose in your life. There could be a more balanced approach to family and love at this time, even if these have been confusing experiences for you in the past. Sometimes I have to pause and like reread part of it. There could be, there could be a more balanced approach to family and love at this time. Even if these have been confusing experiences for you in the past. For some, this card upright could signal the presence of a new man in your life, one who tends to be more thoughtful and aware. Whether or not this man is a love interest or a friend, he brings a high intention to help to help where personal projects, family, or home issues are concerned. And then it also always has an affirmation with it. And the affirmation for this one is, I am comfortable with all of my emotions. I honor and express them in appropriate ways. I feel peace. So just so you're aware as you're, as you're listening to me read these, I usually ignore the any of the gender roles that are talked about in the cards. So I just really prefer to be gender, neut gender neutral. Um, so this card for me is really talking about emotions and are you allowing emotions to play a role in your life are you stuffing down emotions are there places in your life where you have feelings that you haven't expressed to someone because honoring and appreciating those emotions are also part of being in flow which is kind of a big part of what we're talking about today all right the second card the world number 29 so so far we've got emotions the world is all about expansion and opening up the man in this picture is looking out over a bay over, above which this beautiful sphere of the earth is rotating. This card is reminding you to expand your vision and contemplate some much broader options. The world is wide, so there's a lot out there to consider. In the modern age of technology, this could specifically be referring to creating or expanding to a more global network through the internet or social marketing. Drawing this card also lets you know that you have unlimited resources available to you, and now is the time to think big. As they say, the world is your oyster, so get ready to gobble it up. Mm -hmm. And then the affirmation is, my life expands into boundless horizons with unlimited powerful energy. A world of possibilities is open to me now. 
When I think about this card, I think one of the things that comes to mind for me over the last week, even in just talking with some of my clients and people that I run into at networking events is I find that so many of us, and this reminds me to do it as well. So many of us think so small because we don't want to be disappointed. And so we don't even dream about what we might want. And we have no idea what we actually want because we, we don't spend any time thinking about it. Because if we do, I think for the most part, people get really afraid of dreaming like that because they don't want to live in this place where they don't have it. So this card's really talking about expanding your mind beyond what you think is possible. Going much bigger. Asking for more. So I'm going to share with you an example in a little bit here uh, of how one of the ways in which I've done this before. All right. And the third card is strategy. Number 21. Looking at the numbers of all these cards too, I also like to do just because I think about synchronicities all the time. So the first card is a 45. The second card is 29 and then 21. The four and the five adds up to nine. The two and the nine add up to 11. Nine, 11, and then three. All right. Strategy, making a plan. This card shows a pen, journal, compass, and a key. When you receive this card upright, it indicates that this is the optimum time for setting up a very specific strategy for achieving your goals. Write about the direction you want to go in. Consider any potential change in course that may be needed. Be aware of the particulars regarding your goals and have some conscious plan in mind. Plan in mind. Structure the short-term goals needed to make your long-term goal a reality. This card is telling you to spend some time setting things in order. It's time to take full control. Add thought to action and set your sights on the road ahead. And the affirmation is, I plan the necessary steps to achieve my goals, and I'm willing to take action in that direction. I am flexible, persistent, and prepared. I love that, making a plan. I was thinking about this today uh, because one of the topics that was kind of coming to mind for me too to talk about but it's not going to be the majority of this episode is manifestation. It's such a popular word right now and really popular for people to talk about. But I've just recognized that one of the most important pieces that oftentimes people leave out is the embodiment of it. So for instance, if you want to become a speaker and you want to speak in front of groups and you want that to be a part of what you do in life, and yet you hesitate to, for instance, put yourself out there on Instagram or Facebook or TikTok, like you don't put your videos out there talking, speaking in some way, shape or form. That is going to hinder that manifestation of becoming a speaker. So a lot of times people let things get in the way that would actually propel them toward this, that manifestation, but you have to fully embody that manifestation. What does it mean to be a speaker? What does it mean to be an author? What does it mean to do whatever it is you feel called to do in life. And, and what are some of those things that would get you to that place? So strategy is a big part of that, of manifesting. It's interesting. These three cards, embracing your emotions, opening up for the world, and then having a strategy to reach your goals. It feels like for some of you, you might not be fully expressy. You might, wow, sometimes I know you guys will excuse me. Those of you that listen, when I really allow myself to just talk and not think too much about what I'm saying, I will sometimes say words backwards. <laughs> uh, or if I feel like I'm channeling a message, which I did ask today before I started this recording, I told the angels and my spirit guides if there was any message that was supposed to flow through me that I specifically allow it to flow through. And I always do this, but today I was extra intentional about it. So it feels like there are some emotions that perhaps you haven't been allowing yourself to feel fully. And those emotions might have some desires along with them, like a desire to feel more joy, a desire to feel more ease, more peace, a desire to incorporate more of something that you love, more music, more art, more travel, more food, more, just more enjoyment. And so you first, it's, yeah, this is almost like a three-step strategy, actually, opening up to these emotions, expressing them, allowing them to come through, sharing them with the people that you know, sharing them with the people you don't know, that is going to open up the world to you by expressing those emotions. You're going to step right into step two here, which is the world card. In order for us to manifest, I always think of it now, like we have to meet the, the universe halfway. So I have to express something that I want 
share about it, talk about it, put it out there. And that's kind of like taking the first step towards the universe. And then the universe will move towards me automatically. But it's not until I take that first step. I have to take some action. I have to show with my body what I want by taking some action. So expressing those emotions will open up your world. And then as those opportunities appear, uh, you can start to build a strategy around how you want to do it. So for example, with the podcast, when I knew that I wanted to speak more, I knew that my the only next step that I could think of to do was to start this podcast two years ago. And then once I started it, I came up with a strategy that I would utilize to ensure that I didn't burn out and overdo it. Because I can oftentimes, um, as I've been recovering from burnout and recovering from how I used to work and how I used to operate, I can oftentimes slip into those old habits without even realizing it. So that's why I set myself up for a strategy. I set myself up to win by saying, okay, I'm only going to do two episodes a month. That's it. And I'm going to do this for at least a year, see how it feels. And then I can increase if I want to. But so far, this two episode a month rhythm has been really good for me. And so that's what I'm kind of feeling is like these cards are telling us that there's there are some emotions and some feelings that some of you have not been fully expressing. And as soon as you do, as soon as you start to express those things, the world's going to open up for you. And that's when your life really starts to get delicious. It really starts to, uh, you start to realize how much you've really been withholding from yourself in so many ways. And we're not supposed to, there's no supposed to here. Like we are as human beings designed to feel joy and enjoy the journey. And so I think for a lot of us, the conditioning has been that we just push, 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 hustle, and work for other people, including our family and friends and whoever else it might be, and that we're not supposed to feel that much joy. We're not just supposed to enjoy our life that much. But in truth, I believe we are. So it's going to feel strange if you haven't done it before, or if this is not a part of your regular everyday uh, experience, but I want you to start to think about what are some ways in which you could experience more joy on a daily basis. And what are some emotions and feelings that perhaps you haven't been allowing yourself to express or feel either with yourself or with someone else significant in your life? Okay, that's, that's the first step. All right, interesting. I like that that came out today. So I wanted to start off the episode that way, because I, I was thinking a lot about reflection. And thinking about how important it is to reflect. And it used to be a really, really tough thing for me to do because again, I didn't want to slow down enough to really spend the time to do it. Hey, I'm popping in for a moment to let you know that if you're interested in working with me one-on-one -on -one in a small group, or you'd like to attend one of my upcoming retreats, please reach out or add yourself to my email list. You can go to iloveitwhen.org and scroll to the bottom where you'll see there's a spot to sign up. I also love to speak, teach, and create experiences for small, medium, or large size companies. If you know someone that I should know, please connect us. I'm looking to utilize I Love It When to create global change, and that will require collaborating with all of you. You're all so much more powerful than you realize. Remind yourself of that today. And when I had a retreat in Sedona two years ago, one of the uh, readers that I saw before I left, she's an, an angel reader. She was wonderful. I believe her name was Melanie. And one of the things she left me with was the universe wants you to reflect once a week. And I was like, once a week, really? <laughs> Cause I was kind of used to doing a reflection process at the end of the year or at the beginning of the new year. Um, but not really on a regular basis like this. And, and she said, yes, they want you to think about how far you've come on a weekly basis, because by doing that, you're actually going to add fuel to the fire for what's coming next. And I just didn't understand that until I really started to incorporate it. And it took me like six months before I began to get into the habit. And there are still times to this day where I don't do it every week, but I'm working on it. And so every Monday I have it actually in my calendar. This is part of me embodying that next move. Uh, I want to make sure that this is something I develop. And so I add it to my calendar and on my calendar, I have um, take stock. And it's every Monday from noon to one. And I don't have to do it at the time. I can move it to wherever I want, but I have it in there so that every week, no matter what, I at least see it and I think about it. And the interesting thing that I've noticed here is that by even just having that reminder in my calendar, I think about the last week and I think about what happened last week. How did it go? What do I want to do differently? How do I want to feel this week? 
am I noticing? What am I noticing? And this is key here because it's so easy for us to get caught up in all of the marketing around us. Even if you don't watch TV, like I don't watch TV, you still catch the marketing when you're out at the grocery store, or when you're talking to your friends and family, right? And it's so easy to just get caught up in the next thing rather than pausing and thinking about like what happened last week and what do I want to do differently this week? So you have to do it with a lot of intention. But what I realize is it's given me the opportunity to catch myself in some things. Like to catch myself, for instance, last week I noticed that I did not meditate nearly as much as I usually do. Now I have a daily meditation practice every morning, no matter what. And I think last week I might have missed like three or four days. It was for a series of reasons and things, but I could have made the time. And so I recognized that towards the end of last week, I was feeling really impatient. I was feeling some resentment. I was feeling anxious. And that those things were signs to me like, hey, get back into your meditation practice, get back into it, start the day off with it. Because uh, even if I did it later in the day, that would feel good. But starting my day off with meditation allows me to come and approach the day from a place of peace, which I really need. I really need to be at my baseline before I go into my day. And so I would say right now that it, it might feel painful. It might feel over the top, but I would really encourage you to start a reflection process on a weekly basis because eventually you get to the point where it's happening pretty much every day, which is what happens for me now. So I wanted to go and start with the three card pull because the cards are also something that I utilize to make it fun for me and also to just engage different parts of my life in this reflection process. So the cards when I pull for myself, they might have me reflect on things that I haven't thought of in a while or things that I maybe I didn't even want to look at. I didn't know. So I make this all a part of it because it makes it that much more fun for me. So this leads me into that question that I got from that coaching client this last week. How do you know when you're on the right path? And I literally paused in the, in the call and I was like, wow, this could be a whole podcast episode. This was my question for so long. I had this question since I was in high school. And I think the reason it came up in high school is like it comes up for all of us in that around that age of 14, 15, 16, when you start to get these messages from adults, like, what do you want to do with your life? You know, what do you want to, what kind of a job do you want to have? What are you going to do? 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 And so you start to ponder that question. And all I could think about was, well, how do I know what the right decision is? What if I make the wrong decision and go down the wrong path? I don't want to waste my time. That was the biggest thing for me was I didn't want to waste my time. I didn't want to waste money. I didn't want to waste, period. And what I wish someone had said to me back when I was like 12, 13, I wish someone had said, you know, try all the things. Try whatever lights you up. If you hear about a dance class and you find that like that sounds intriguing and that sounds like fun, do it. Do it all. Because the more that you do it, the more that you take and follow that in, those inspired actions, things that bring you joy, things that light you up or intrigue you, the faster you'll find those things that you could do all the time that don't take any energy. And so, but thinking about it in the midst of her, that call with that client, I said, okay, here are some things that tell me that I know now I'm on the right path that are different from what I've experienced previously in my life. One, synchronicities abound. So I'm a big numbers person. And if you follow me on social media, you know this. Angel numbers have always spoken to me. And for those of you that don't know what angel numbers are, essentially they're like when you catch numbers out and about during your day that are either repeating or uh, perhaps mean something personally for you. So like in the beginning, I would see a lot of 3.33 PM, 4.44, 5.55, um, a lot of the same same numbers. And now I'm seeing numbers that accelerate. So like 1234, 1234, 456. I see a lot of numbers like that. And then there's also some that have a certain pattern to them, like 808 is also another one that I see. Um, synchronicities can happen in all sorts of ways. They can happen with numbers. They can happen, you know, you see a feather and it means something for you. Um, you could think of a person and then they call you or text you. So synchronicities Another word that people would use is, oh, like, but it's not a synchronicity, it's a coincidence. Oh, that's just a coincidence that happened. Just like that didn't actually mean anything. Well, when I decided 
that it meant something is when I started to see them more and when it started to make a whole lot of sense. And so I've talked about that before in a previous episode where you have to make the decision that it means something for you and nobody else can do that for you. But it was when I got enough pushback from people around me who would say, oh, that's just a coincidence. That's just, and I knew in my heart, it was not a coincidence. And that's when I finally had to like make a stand and say, no, this actually means something for me. I don't care if it doesn't mean anything for you, but it means something for me. And I'm going to act on it because of that. And so that's what I mean by synchronicities abound. There's different signs that your spirit guides and the universe are using to communicate with you to say, hey, you're on the right path. For me, I don't know that the numbers like, there's Kyle Gray's angel number book that I have, and I use that quite often for the meanings. Now I look less at the individual meanings, like what does 333 mean versus 555? And I just see it as a general sign that I'm in the, I'm headed in the right direction. If there's something specifically that they want me to know, I'll still look up the numbers. But I think for me, it's more about like, hey, you're just headed in the right direction. Just keep going this way. Um, the second piece to knowing you're on the right path is you're making decisions based on what you want and desire, not someone else. And so I still have to check myself on this on the daily. Like, am I making this decision to head out and go to a coffee shop with Tom because I really want to go? Or am I going because I know it would help, it would help him feel better? That's an example of a really simple one. Like sometimes I find myself still on autopilot making decisions because I know I think it would help someone else. I think someone else would feel better if I did it. I know someone else would feel better if I did it. And it's a really tough place to be. And it's a really tough uh, habit to break out of. Because it doesn't mean that I don't help people anymore. But what I had to look at was what is the ratio of me helping other people to doing things for myself? because I, because they bring me joy. And I was way out of balance. If you're watching me here on this video, it's like, here's where I was helping other people here where is where I was making decisions because I wanted to do the thing, whatever it was, I had to bring it back into balance a bit. So I still help people. I still do things sometimes because I know they have expressed, the person has expressed that they would really love for me to be there. They would really love to do this thing with me. But the majority of my decisions now are based on doing things because I know it's what I really desire. And I also know that by doing the things that I really desire, that's what's actually going to help other people. That's the thing I've learned too. So you'll know that you're on the right path when the majority of your decisions are being based on things that will, that bring you joy, things that are things that you really desire. You're not making decisions because of what someone else needs or wants. And then the third piece of how you'll know you're on the right path is there's an ease and a flow to it things just fall into place. It's not a super struggle. It's not really difficult. There are definitely times where I know, for instance, like my business is exactly where I'm supposed to be. I know that this was my path. I know that this is my highest and best path and best use for myself. That doesn't mean that it hasn't been a struggle. That doesn't mean that there haven't been times when I've really broken down and had to rebuild myself. But there's been an unbelievable amount of ease and flow to it when I think back and I reflect on it. So I wanted to give you an example of what ease and flow looks like. This last weekend, Tom and I went to Centralia, Washington, which is about two hours south of where we live in Everett. And he was going for a Nerf battle because he wanted to meet up with some people and uh, and battle Nerf, which is super fun if you haven't done it before. I highly recommend it. And so it was probably about Tuesday or Wednesday of last week where I said to myself, okay, I think I want to go with you. And I said to Tom, like, okay, I want to come with you. I think this would be good for me to get out of the house. Let's, and I'm going to find us a VRBO. I'm going to find us a VRBO for really cheap or free. And he's like, okay. And he he even said, like, I know when you get like this, like, you're going to make it happen, whatever happens. And meaning he knows, like, when, when I'm manifesting something, it's going to happen. And so it was like, Tuesday of that week where I started, I, my idea was I was going to message a couple people on VRBO or Airbnb and see if they would give me a discounted rate because we were just coming down for Saturday and Sunday night. Uh, we weren't staying for a long time. It was going to be a last minute booking. And this is something that I learned from 
being around real estate agents and working with my boss in my last job, I wanted to learn about negotiation, not because I always want to get the lowest rate, but because I wanted to learn how to better stand up for myself because I'd learned before that I could, I was just taken advantage of by some people who were pushy or manipulative sales agents. So I wanted to learn how to push back so I could stand up for myself. Well, one of the ways in which I've done that is by asking for a discount, asking for something that I want. And so I messaged three different people on Airbnb and I ended up getting someone to message me back who was willing to give us the lower rate for their waterfront property in Olympia. And so it was fantastic. We got this beautiful house, it was within our budget for Saturday and Sunday night. And so I got to come down and stay at the house, hang out, meditate, read, just relax while Tom was having his Nerf battle. That Sunday, the Sunday he had his Nerf battle, he ended up rolling his ankle. And it was bad enough that he definitely most likely sprained it. And so he would not have been able to really drive home comfortably. He could have made it, but it would have been really painful. <laughs> and so having me there, it was obvious I was supposed to be there. Like I, as soon as that happened, I was like, oh, okay. This is one of the reasons why I was supposed to come. So I was able to drive us down and back. And then the other thing that happened was I had a class coming up that Tuesday with Enme Mangles, who's a mentor and teacher of mine. And she was teaching in Federal Way, which is just south of me by about 45 minutes. And Tom and I right now share a car. And so he usually has a, a class that he teaches on Tuesday afternoons. And I didn't know how we were going to make this work. Like, how was I going to drive to Federal Way? And how was he going to get to his class in Linwood and back? And as it so happened, he decided not to go to class that Tuesday because his ankle was too bad. And then he got invited to come to the class. And so he was able to come with me and network and learn. And it was just all meant to be. So looking back on it, Wednesday, the day after, I looked back and I was like, wow, I see how that all unfolded. And I didn't have to do a whole lot. I did have to take some inspired action, right? I had to message some of the Airbnbs to make that happen. It wasn't like, oh, I really, angels, I really want to stay in an Airbnb. Could you get someone to reach out to me and offer it for free? No, I had to take that first step of putting the ask out there. Um, and then how it all unfolded with, unfortunately, Tom rolling his ankle, wish that didn't happen, but me being there to drive back and then him being able to come to class on Tuesday, which was all just meant to be. So there's an ease and a flow to that, right? Like things line up, you never expected them to in ways that just you never knew. But by just going with it and going what's right next in front of you, like I couldn't have planned all the way out until Tuesday when class was happening, right? I was trying to, I was trying to see if I could either borrow a car from my parents or see if Tom could get a ride somewhere. I was trying to make those plans the week before, but they just didn't keep working. Like there was, it was not working out. So I finally just let it go. And I let it unfold and it happened. So that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about letting the unfolding happen and just going with the flow, going with what comes next. It's You don't know the next 10 steps. You sometimes only know just the next one. That's what I mean by that. So I hope that makes sense. So in order to stay in this flow, to stay in this place of ease, I use meditation. And when I was writing up the notes for this episode, I wrote down um, meditation is kind of like plugging yourself back into that electrical current. So if you imagine yourself like a plug, every time you meditate, you're literally hooking yourself back up to universal flow, uh, to that energetic frequency, to that currency that keeps you in tune with your higher self. And so that's why meditation on a, on a daily basis is so important to me because it brings me back to that baseline so I can approach my day from a place of responding rather than reacting. But it also makes sure that I'm connecting with my higher self consistently so that I'm always receiving messages, so that I'm always able to communicate and ask for help and all of that. So that's how I stay in the flow, one of the ways in which I stay in the flow. So the next thing I want to do is take you through a meditation that I mentioned earlier. And I did this on Instagram a couple of months ago now. It's called A Walk with Mo. And so I'm actually going to turn off my screen so that I don't distract you. And wherever you're at, if you're driving, you know, you can pause the video now and come back to this later. Uh, but I'd like you to get into, into a place where you have probably just about 10 minutes to yourself with no interruptions. 
And ideally, I'd love for you to be wearing headphones right now as well. And I think I've talked about this before, but wearing headphones when I meditate has really helped me to tune out the rest of the world and just be in the moment. And so I'm going to ask you to wear headphones, get into a place where you're not going to be interrupted and sit somewhere ideally where your spine can be straight and your feet are planted on the floor. All right, I'm going to cut off my screen now. So I want you to put both feet on the floor and then put your hands on your knees with your palms facing up. I want you to take a deep breath in through your nose to the count of four. Hold for three, two, one, and release through your mouth for four, three, two, one. Hold for three, two, one, and then breathe in again for four, three, two, one, hold, release, and one more breath in, one, two, three, four, hold, release. All right, now I want you to imagine that you're out for a walk. You're in a comfortable outfit with good walking shoes. And you're walking down the street and you're gonna meet me at a bridge. As you approach, you notice that one of your shoes is untied. So you lean down to tie your shoe. And when you look up, there I am. Smile, and I give you a hug, and I ask you if you're ready to go. You nod your head, and we turn to your right and start to make our way across the bridge. The bridge just runs over some train tracks. It's not a very big bridge. When you get to the middle, you can see both north and south and there's a train coming from the south. We stop to let the train pass by underneath us and feel the rush of the air. I can never see exactly what the train's carrying, but I imagine all the people who help to fill it and all the people that will receive the goods that are on that train. We continue on across the bridge and start heading down the stairs that lead to this little man-made pond. We make our way around the pond. There's lots of reeds sticking up out of the water, a couple ducks playing there. A dragonfly pops right across us, across the path in front of us. And a bunny, you can see a bunny scampering off to the right. We make our way down the trail to the main trail that runs right along the river. And I always like to turn to the right first to take you to my favorite tree. This tree is just about 50 feet down to the right and it stands right next to a picnic table. at the spot in the river where you can see the bend and you can often find seals playing there, seals and otters. I go right up to the tree and you follow me. We put our hands on the tree. I know it might look silly, but it feels really good. And we are asking the tree 
to remove any negative or stagnant energy from our bodies. We're basically grounding. We're asking the tree to help us get back to our baseline. While we stand there with our hands on the tree, a couple people walk by, smile, and continue on their way. I thank the tree, and we start to head west on the path. For most of the time, we walk in silence. And there are a couple of things that you would like to talk to me about. Whatever they are, I'd like to give you a moment now to express what's coming up for you. You can either say it out loud or just think it. Once we're done with the meditation, I encourage you to write those things down and journal on them and reach out to me and ask me about them in person. We continue on down the path and we run across a family of birds. The three littlest ones are chirping and it's obvious that the mom is looking for food for them. And then I notice we almost step on a garden, garden snake. I often see these when I'm on my walks. Snakes are a sign of transformation and moving into what's next. We, we move off the path to a grassy area and take off our shoes and sit down in the grass. I want you to take a moment to think of anything that's been weighing you down this week. Anything that's been heavy on your heart. I want you to put your hands on the grass and imagine the energy of that situation, that person, the thing that's been bugging you. I want, to, you, want you to imagine the energy of it leaving your hands and going back into the earth. Ask the universe to take care of it for you. Let it go. Next, I want you to imagine that a portal opens above your head and bright white light with rainbow particles comes out through the portal and washes over you. And as it washes over your body, it flows down directly into the earth, taking with it any other negative or stagnant energy that's left. It works its way through your chest, your stomach, your lower back, thighs, your knees, your calves, your feet, and it soaks all the way up into the ground. We stand back up and we head back to the beginning of the path. We go past the pond, see another dragonfly, back up the stairs, across the bridge and back to where we first met up. Give you a hug and we part ways. All right, take a moment here to come back to your body, to wiggle your hands and your feet 
stretch it out a little bit and take a moment to write anything down that you need to, to ensure you don't forget any messages you got during the meditation. All right, turn my screen back on. Thank you for going on that walk with me. That is oftentimes exactly what happens on my walks. <laughs> I'm just usually by myself. But I felt very much led to do that with you all today. So I would love to hear when you do the meditation, what comes up for you. Anything and everything matters. Don't discount anything. Oftentimes, I think we discount the images that we see or the ideas that float past our brain or the people that come up because we think, oh, well, that's just because I've been thinking about them. Well, you're thinking about them for a reason. Everything is coming up into your, into your consciousness for a reason. So don't discount it. Just write it down, journal on it, and then I would love to hear from you. Send me an email. Let me know what came up for you. And I'd love to hear what else you do to reflect. If there's a habit that you've gotten into that helps you to reflect on how far you've come, I would love to hear about it. Thank you for joining me for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed. <laughs>